Hey, Chris here. I just got done with jury duty. I got called in today for the first time in like 10 years. They brought me into a court, painstakingly explained all the procedures. And then after a lunch break, they uh, went and told us that one of the lawyers had got, or one of the prosecutors had gotten sick. So they had to cancel the whole thing and, and <laughs> postpone it to tomorrow. So I'm off the hook. And so I'm not uh, entirely unhappy about that. Anyway, uh, I got some good stuff to, for you today. I think you're going to enjoy this, so take notes if you want. Um, I apologize if I seem like I'm looking off somewhere else. I'm recording this on both a phone and a computer at the same time, so I can't look at both at the same time. So, you know, if, uh, if you were wondering, that's why. Anyway, so this is, this is something I'm doing, by the way, in case you were wondering. I'm doing uh, is sort of like a daily podcast, not really... Not really for anyone in particular. It's kind of just so I get used to talking on camera. That's the main purpose of it. But if you get some value out of it, I'm very happy about that. Anyway, so let's jump in. So I talked in a previous episode about how the value you get comes from the value you give. And in order to understand the value you give, you have to start thinking about other people. You have to start putting yourselves in other people's shoes, specifically whoever your client is. This is the case for uh, whether you're selling a product or you're selling yourself as uh, like an employee or a, or a freelancer or you're doing some sort of service for someone. Um, and so because, of, because the value you get is, is a reflection of the value that you give, uh, you, it makes no sense to, to be entitled to think that, oh, you deserve this, you deserve a certain wage, you deserve certain benefits, et cetera, et cetera. You have a right to free health care, whatever it is. You get what you give. And um, so, uh, you know, an obvious example of this is that if you, if you have a car and you have a pen, um, you sell the car, you'll probably make more money than by selling the pen. Why? Because the car is worth more than the pen is. It has a greater value. It's not, it's not discrimination against people with pens or it's not car salesman privilege. It's because the car is more valuable than the pen. And similarly, if, you, uh, if somebody provides a more valuable service in the labor market than someone else, then the, the person providing more valuable service is going to be worth more and will therefore get paid more. So, I wanted to be a little more specific about that so that you could actually apply it to your own businesses and your own job search or whatever it is you're doing or trying to escape the nine to five and live the digital nomad lifestyle, which is kind of what I'm getting at here. So I want you to know what exactly you can expect. So let's think about employment for a minute. So this is, this is the case whether you're looking for a traditional nine to five job or you're looking for a freelance project. This applies equally either way. Now, the first thing that you should consider is that your service has to be profitable for your employer or your client, whoever you're doing the service for. It has to make him more money than he is spending. Uh, then you have to make him more money than you charge. If you if you are charging more money that he will get from hiring you, then he will not hire you. So that's kind of the, uh, what I call the profitability threshold. So if say you are doing a job that uh, makes your employee, your employer $50,000, you can charge, as long as you charge less than $50,000 for the service, then it will be profitable for the employer and therefore worth it to hire you. But, and here's the next caveat, you can't charge more than other people who are willing to provide the same service. So if you have someone that's willing to provide the same service who's equally qualified as you, and the profitability threshold is $50,000, and the other person is willing to work for $30,000, right? It makes sense to hire that person because it's below that profitability threshold. But you can't go charge $40,000. You know, you're, you're below the profitability threshold, so it would make sense to hire you if you were the only one in the market. But since this other guy is willing to do it for 30000 then it makes sense for the, uh, for the client or the employer to hire the guy that has the lower price because it's the same product. 
So um, you might think that this means it's a race to the bottom, that uh, you know this guy charges 30000 So you say, okay, I'm going to charge 29000 He says, okay, I'll charge 28000 et cetera, until you're, until you're like working for slave wages. But that's not how it works. Um, you know, employee, employers wish that was how it works, but it rarely does. And the reason is because the employers also have to compete with each other. So if you're uh, willing to do a job for $30,000 and um, the uh, and uh, another company is willing to pay 25000 for it, for example, then nobody is going to work for that company for less than $25,000 because they have the alternative of a different company um, that kind of provides that baseline. So this is, I mean, this is how basic supply and demand works as, as applied to the labor market. So this is why, uh, you know, even uh, hardly anybody makes minimum wage. Almost everybody makes more than minimum wage. It's because... Of these of these forces the employer can't set the price and the the employee can't set the price they have to meet in the middle because of these comp competitive forces on both sides anyway so that's kind of the the basic economics of it but there is another factor that a lot of people uh, at least in traditional economics fail to consider and that is that of imperfect information that is just because there's another employer willing to pay X price so there's another uh, another uh, freelancer willing to work for X price does not mean that everybody in the market knows that. So say you're willing to do a job for 40000 and someone else is willing to do it for 30000 Well, it would be a rational decision to hire the other guy because he's willing to work for less unless the employers or the, uh, the clients do not know that this other guy exists or do not know that he's willing to work for less which is usually the case because there's so many people in the world and uh, usually nobody, uh, you can't know everything about everyone at all the time. So you can take advantage of that by getting yourself out there. You can make yourself more valid, get yourself paid more. You're not going to make yourself more valuable, but you'll get yourself paid more just by uh, getting yourself in front of the people that want to hire. Now, all of the same things apply if you're selling a product. So um, in this case, I'm, I'm thinking about selling a product to an end consumer. The difference is that often the value is intangible. So sometimes, sometimes it's not. If you have a product that you swear up and down will make the person a million dollars, right, then the value of the product, assuming he believes you're, what you're saying, is worth one million dollars. But a lot of times it's it's not so tangible. So take for example, if you're selling a product that helps someone lose weight. Well, how much is a product worth if it helps someone lose weight? Um, well, start with let, let's assume again that we that we our our customer believes us when we say that it'll help us help him lose weight. So um, think of uh, think about put yourself in the shoes of your ideal customer. Say he's. Uh, typical office worker guy and uh, he's overweight and um, he would like to lose weight because maybe he'll have a better shot at uh, getting a date with the cute girl in the desk across from him. Or maybe he has issues with the self-image and he would have more confidence if he was to lose weight. Um, maybe he thinks his colleagues would take him more seriously if he lost weight, etc., etc. So there's a million things and there's no, it's hard to put a dollar value on that, right? Because um, you, can, you can't buy that kind of thing, right? You can't buy confidence. But you can, um, you can kind of consider how much it might be worth. And it's, you know, if you think whether that's worth a lot or a little, frankly, it's probably a lot. Being able to date the people that you want, having, having confidence, having good self-image, etc. So being able to lose weight is worth a lot. So let's, let's put a, uh, a random or kind of an arbitrary value on that. Let's say that if um, a product that can, or let's say that the end goal of losing 50 pounds, let's say, 50, losing 50 pounds is worth $20,000 to your ideal customer. Um, you know, that's kind of something I pulled out of thin air, but obviously this is worth a lot. Probably most people would be willing to sacrifice quite a lot in terms of money for uh, to, to improve their self-image and get dates and all that. So, if he's willing to pay $20,000 for it, 
then um, that's kind of that's your profitability threshold, like I was talking before. And if you sell for anything under twenty thousand dollars, then he should be willing to buy. But you have to compete with all the other people that are selling weight loss products. So if somebody else is selling a weight loss product for twenty dollars and you're trying to sell yours for ten thousand, well, that's uh, not much competition there. He's going to go with the other one, and uh, um. Well, so you, unless, unless, there's where I was going with that. He's going to go with the other one, unless you can make a stronger proposition for your product will meet his goals better, faster, uh, more reliably than the other product. So if he believes that your $10,000 product absolutely will help him lose this weight, but this cheap $20 product probably won't, then he may well be willing to pay the $10,000 rather than the $20. It happens all the time. So with, uh, now this gets to kind of the, the point of if you want to make money, here are the rules. And this is true with selling a product or selling your labor. It works the same either way. So one, you provide something of value. And the more value it is, the, the higher that profitability threshold. And then two is you have to position yourself as the only person or as the only product or employee or whatever it is that can reliably uh, deliver that value proposition. So the more and you know it's it's kind of it's a sliding scale too. So if there's you're the only one that can possibly provide this, then your your ability to price is going to be up to that profitability threshold. If there's two people total, you and someone else in the market that are able to provide it, well, you can't go quite that high, but you can get pretty close. And then if there's a million people that are willing to provide that value, well, then you don't have much bargaining power at all. This is like the difference between um, in the job market, say somebody who's who's building building robot algorithms is going to be pretty rare because there's not a whole lot of people that can do that because it's difficult. Whereas flipping burgers at McDonald's is pretty easy, so there's a lot of people that can do that. So the the, the robot programmer is going to be able to to command a much higher price than the burger flipper. And then um, and then. Uh, a big part of this too is that you uh, you can manipulate to you, well you have to position yourself as the only one or one of one of few that can provide this service you want to get paid a lot and um, so something like let me go back to that weight loss product example the app, you have to you have to differentiate yourself somehow because there's a million weight loss products right but you have to um, you have to prove that it works um, if you can and, and come up with something that makes it that makes it better than the other product. So maybe it works faster. Um, maybe it works for people with your particular health disorder. Maybe it, um, maybe it works without you having to give up the things that you love to eat, right? So if you can, if you can convince people of that, then you can increase the perceived value of that. And um, so that's about it for today. I think I'll stop there. Now, obviously, there's going to be a lot of specifics that I could go over about uh, how to increase various type, the value, the perceived value of various types of products, and how to convince people that you are the only one or one of a few that can provide it. So that will be the topic of some future discussions. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, leave them below.